Okay, in this video, I'm continuing where I left off on the, uh, this is the mixed integration practice worksheet. And so I'm just going to do. So um, basically, I see this 1 minus x on top. So I want to get the, the thing inside the uh, square root in terms of 1 minus x. Actually, I don't even want to do that. I'm going to take a negative out of there so that I can just do x minus 1. So I'm going to put a little thing like that and put a negative 1 on the outside. Okay. Again, this is one of those where some of you are going to say, oh, how would I ever expect to think of this? Well, you might not think of it. But after you've seen it once or twice or three times, you might think of it. Um, however, something like this would not be on the test. But this is a great example of the power of trig substitution and integration. So what I'm going to do with that thing on the bottom is I am going to um, complete the square. If you remember completing the square process, um, you may or may not remember that. Uh, you end up with this thing is the same thing as 9 minus x minus 1 squared. Um, and I know that seems like a rate crazy out of the blue pull from nowhere. Um, but um, if, you, if you just look at what I've done there, you can multiply out x minus 1 squared x minus 1 times itself, and you'll see that you'll get this um, that same expression over there. So if once I see that, then it'll be very similar to this one we just did over here, right? Where I have a, um, it'll be like that. So it's going to be a, in this case though, it's, oh, it's the same. So it's a, it's a sine substitution. So, but before I do that substitution, I'm going to let u equal x minus 1, which means du is dx, which means that and the integral or the limits of integration are going to be uh, 0 would be negative 1 and 1 would be 0 because I'm just because u is 1 less than x, right? So u would be 1 less than 0, which is negative 1, and u would be 1 less than 1, which would be 0. Okay, so I'll, now I don't have to switch back to x. So now I have a negative u on top. And the square root of 9 minus u squared on the bottom and a du right there. Okay, so now I'm going to do my u subs or my trick substitution. So I'm going to let u equal, uh, oops, sorry about that, guys. I'm going to let u equal uh, 3 sine theta which means du is equal to um, 3 cosine theta, d theta. All righty then. So then this my new integral is now going to be, and I'm going to go ahead and switch the uh, limits of integration. So when when is, oh, actually I'm not. I'm going to leave them alone. Okay, so that would be a question mark now. I don't know. But I'm going to go with, um, on top, I should have a negative 3 sine theta times du, which is 3 cosine theta d theta. And on the bottom, I'm going to have the square root of uh, 9 times 1 minus um, sine squared. Okay. Again, I kind of st skipped a step there. I skipped a different step this time, just so you can kind of see. We just get the same thing happens every time in these guys, right? So next step here, again, I don't know the limits of integration because I'm doing theta right now. So on top, I'm going to have a 9 sine theta cosine theta d theta. And on the bottom, I'm going to have a 3 cosine theta by that because that's 1 minus sine squared which is the same thing as cosine squared and we square root it. So the cosines cancel out and the 3 and the 9 cancel out and I'm left with the integral of 3 sine theta. d theta of course. Cosines cancel out. Yeah. 
Okay, and then we, can, of course, we can integrate that. No problem. That would be uh, three cosine theta, except for oh, I left my lost my negative there. That negative should still be there. Should still be there. And now, when I take the derivative of three cosine theta, I get negative three sine theta, which is exactly what I want. So I'm good. And I'm evaluating that from I don't know to I don't know. Now we got to switch it back. So uh, this is what I've been wanting. Yes. So we're going to have to draw a triangle this time. Here's the triangle. Here's my theta. Stop that. Here's my theta. And remember my trig substitution was u equals 3 sine theta, which means sine equals u over 3. So that means I'm going to put a u right there, a 3 right there, and this is going to be the square root of... What is it, folks? Um, U squared, ah, huh? sorry. U squared minus nine. Okay, that's the other way around, isn't it? Did I do that right? No, I didn't. Ah, see, that's why it's good to recognize that that's, it's supposed to match up, isn't it? Because sine is, sine of theta is u over 3. So that means opposite the u and hypotenuse of the 3. So this is going to be the square root of 9 minus u squared. Aha! So down here, we're going to have um, 3 times the cosine of theta. Well, the cosine of theta is the square root of 9 minus u squared all over 3. Of course, the 3 is going to cancel out there. And this is evaluated from negative 1 to 0. OK, the 3s cancel out. I put a 0 in for u, and I get 3, because the square root of 9 is 3. If I put negative 1 in for u, that would be 9 minus 1. So I'd have a minus, um, what, 2 rad 2, because that's the square root of 8. And that would be my answer. Isn't that wonderful? And then I think someone else asked about d. So I'm going to go over here. And, oh, yeah. So this one is going to be the integral from x minus 3 cubed over, well, I can factor that into x minus 3 times x plus 3. And that's nice because I can cancel out one of the x minus 3s. So then I'm going to have, why does it keep doing that? Then I'm going to have the um, x minus 3 squared divided by x plus 3 dx, of course. So this doesn't look like a nice um, u substitution um, because if I, I obviously pick u to be x minus 3 and there's no, there's a dx out there, but then I got this thing down. Oh, actually, yeah, no, because that wouldn't be u. Um, so that's not nice. Uh, well, actually, you could do this u substitution, I think. What if we let u equal x plus 3, then du would be just dx, right? And also, um, u, I'm sorry, x would be equal to um, u minus 3. Now this is going to trip some of your lids. So then this would be a u on the bottom, which is nice, and a, well, that if I replace the x with u minus 3, this would be a u minus 6 squared, wouldn't it? du. And why is that handy? Because I can now multiply this out. So I have the integral of u squared minus 12u plus 36 all over u du. And 
you promised me if you saw one like this on the test that you would divide the u's in there. So that would be the integral from or of u minus 12 plus 36 u to the negative 1 du. And that's a pretty easy integration, right? That would be 1 half u. Um, and I'm going to switch my u's back in right away. So that would be 1 half x plus 3 squared minus 12u, which would be 12 times x plus 3, and plus 36, and the integral of u to the negative 1 would be ln u. So that would be ln of x plus 3, and a little plus c down there. Oh, that's a nice one. I like that. So now the other option that I was thinking is you could, once you get right here, is you could multiply that thing out, the x minus 3 times x minus 3, and then divide x plus 3 into it, and then it would be a partial fraction decomposition. And it would, you should end up with a similar answer as you got down here. Okay. All righty. And that was fun. Um, let me do maybe a couple. I think I did all the ones that was requested of me. Um, I think there are some down on the bottom here. Oh, there's a good partial rate. Yeah, maybe I should do partial fractions. I uh, so this would be a partial fraction. So I'd take 5x minus 3, and I'd factor the bottom. That would be x and x, and 3 and 1, and negative and plus. And so that's got to be equal to a over x plus 1 plus b over x minus 3. <clears throat> Multiply everything by a common denominator, and I get 5x minus 3 is equal to a times x minus 3 plus b times x plus 1. And we could set up the ax plus bx should equal 5x, so we know that 5 is equal to a plus b. And also negative 3 should be equal to a times negative 3, which would be negative 3a, and b times 1, which would be just b. Um, and to solve for this, if I was to use elimination, I could just multiply both sides of the top by a negative 1, so I'd make that negative, negative, and negative. When I add them together, I get negative 8 is equal to negative 4a, and those disappear nicely. So that would be 2 is equal to a. And if 2 is equal to a, and a plus b is equal to 5, that means 3 is equal to b. So then I trot back up here, and I say what I'm really trying to do is the integral of, what was a? 2. 2 over x plus 1 and b would be 3 over x minus 3 plus a dx and that's just going to be a couple ln's so that'd be 2 ln of x plus 1 plus 3 ln of x minus 3 plus c all right that's a fun um, partial fraction decomposition there's a nice um, arc 10. Uh, there's an interesting one. What should we do with that, maybe? It's got an ln x, so it's probably going to be integration by parts. So let's get after it. So um, u has got to be ln x because the du is 1 over x, which works nicely. And this would be, that would leave dv to be the square root of x dx. And of course, that means v would be, hmm, where did that come from? That had to come from x to the 3 halves power, right? Which means I need a 2 thirds out here. Um, so then my u times v would be uh, 2 thirds x to the 3 halves ln x minus the integral of v du. Well, this is the power of ln x and, and integration by parts. Notice that that 1 over x will cancel with these x's. And I'll just have 2 thirds x to the 1 half dx. And that's a piece of cake, just the power rule. So I'm going to have 2 thirds x to the 3 halves ln x, and then minus 
that's had to come from x to the three halves, which means, and I want to end up with two thirds there, so I'm going to have to put um, four ninths there. That way, when I multiply the three halves times the four ninths, go reduce to two thirds, and I put a plus c there. Man, integration by parts is so easy now, huh? How about this one? That looks crazy until you realize that secant squared is the derivative of tangent. So then that makes me think, oh, let's let u equal 1 plus tan 5x. That would make du equal to, whoops, that would make du equal to um, 5 times secant squared 5x, right? Uh, well, I didn't say it right because you can't really respond back to me. So, so then we're going to do our, our u substitution, substitute it in. So we got a du on top, a u on the bottom, and the du brings in a 5 that I don't want. So I need to put a 1 fifth maybe out on the outside. And that's a real nice integration. That's just 1 fifth ln u which, of course, based on what u is, that's going to be 1 fifth ln of 1 plus tangent to the 5x, or tangent of 5x. Tangent of 5x. Plus c. Don't forget the plus c. So this one... Um, that's actually a nice u du. If you go u equals ln x, then du would be dx over x. So you can see this turns into a u cubed du. <laughs> That's pretty straightforward. How about this one? Hmm? Yeah. Well, we could try sine or u is equal to 1 plus sine x and du is equal to cosine x dx so then when i build my integral i'm going to have to do i'm going to have to re, sine x is u minus 1 isn't it so i could put that there put my du right there and then i have just a u on the bottom right mm, that's fun and that matches up exactly, so then that would be the integral of 1 minus u to the negative 1 du. Then we can integrate that pretty easily, so I'll leave that. Um, how many more we got here? Is that the bottom? Huh. So that's the last one. Okay, well, I think I'll pause or end the video there and. Wish you happy integration.